to the Inner Way, a program exploring the spirituality of the Orthodox Church. I'm your host, Father David Smith. This is our ninth program, part of a series on the spiritual discipline of Isikia, which can be translated as stillness or watchfulness. One of my favorite places to go to read about watchfulness is the Philokalia. This is a collection of writings of spiritual masters who, f who focus on prayer, spirituality, watchfulness, attentiveness, and so on. The writings span about a thousand years, and as it says in the introduction, these writings are, quote, guides to the practice of the contemplative life. My favorite writer in the Philokalia is St. Ezekias, the priest. His short work, entitled On Watchfulness and Holiness, is a powerhouse of insight, advice, memorable illustrations, and love. I've debated with myself over the question of how much of On Watchfulness and Holiness I should read on the Inner Way programs, and frankly, I'm not sure yet. But for today, I'm going to start with the first paragraph of the book. Quote, Watchfulness is a spiritual method which, if seditiously practiced over a long period, completely frees us, with God's help, from impassioned thoughts, impassioned words, and evil actions. It leads, insofar as this is possible, to a sure knowledge of the inappre inapprehensible God and helps us to penetrate the divine and hidden mysteries. It enables us to fulfill every divine commandment in the Old and New Testaments and bestows upon us every blessing of the age to come. It is, in the true sense, purity of heart, a state blessed by Christ when he says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God, and one which, because of its spiritual nobility and beauty, or rather because of our negligence, is now extremely rare among monks. Because this is its nature, watchfulness is to be bought only at a great price. But once established in us, it guides us to a true and holy way of life. It teaches us how to activate the three aspects of our soul correctly and how to keep a firm guard over the senses. It promotes the daily growth of the four principal virtues and is the basis of our contemplation. End quote. Let's break this down somewhat. Although St. Ezekias writes rather clearly and it's not difficult to understand what he's saying, he begins, watchfulness is a spiritual method. These are the opening words of his book, Nipsi Sesti Methodos Pneumatici. 
in the original. The Greek word methodos, which easily translates into English as method, comes from meta, meaning after, and odos, meaning road or way. The word originally referred to pursuit as when you chase something. That thing runs down the road and you follow after it on the road, meta odos. I believe Ezekias used this word carefully and deliberately. Watchfulness is not something that we acquire easily, not something we learn without great effort. Ezekias reminds us that watchfulness works only if seditiously practiced over a long period. Seditiously meaning consistently. I always tell anyone who comes to our Jesus prayer group for the first time that it's not easy. It might seem like the easiest thing ever. You just sit there while someone prays the Jesus prayer and someone else reads the Psalter. It looks like it takes no effort at all. But everyone who approaches it that way stops coming. Watchfulness, or stillness, is the same way. Those who pursue these spiritual methods casually find themselves like someone who's chasing a runaway toddler by strolling in the general direction the child has gone. That child will be stopped by something harmful long before the adult, who is supposed to be responsible, catches up to him. Watchfulness is a spiritual method, and so is a spiritual pursuit. And what are the benefits of engaging in this pursuit? Ezekias lists them for us. Freedom from impassioned thoughts, impassioned words, and evil actions. That's almost enough right there. How many times have I gotten into trouble because of any of those things? A sure knowledge of the inapprehensible God. I don't know why I can't say that word. Inapprehensible God. The more you know about God, the better. We are enabled to fulfill every divine commandment in the Old and New Testaments, and we receive every blessing of the age to come. Do you want to live in heaven? You can start right now. We become, as our Lord said in the fifth chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, pure in heart. Now, in the last part of the opening paragraph, Ezekias refers to two theological categories with which we may not be familiar. He talks about the three aspects of our soul and the four principal virtues. The three aspects of the soul are the appetitive aspect, the insensive aspect, and the intelligent aspect. The ancient philosopher Plato, speaking for Socrates, first described these powers, and the early theologians of Christianity continued to use them as a way of studying the soul. All the aspects, and really I prefer the word powers, all the powers of the soul can be used for godliness or for evil. The appetite of power can give us a longing for God and righteousness, but it can also lead us to be tempted with evil desires. The insensive power can fill us with feeling for godly things or can fill us with anger, jealousy, jealousy and so on. The intelligent power focuses our minds according to where our senses direct them. We can contemplate the good and holy by keeping guard over our senses and directing the mind, or we can fill our senses with, well, nonsense. And then our minds wander around with no guidance other than self-gratification. This is why Ezekiel says that watchfulness teaches us how to activate the three aspects of our soul correctly and how to keep a firm guard over the senses. All three powers of the soul are heavily influenced by the five senses. C.S. Lewis wrote in the ninth letter of the Screwtape Letters, quote, He, and here he's speaking of God, 
made the pleasures. All our research so far has not enabled us to produce even one. All we can do is encourage the humans to take the pleasures which our enemy has produced, the enemy being God, at times or in ways or in degrees which he has forbidden. Hence, we always try to work away from the natural condition of any pleasure to that which is least natural, least redolent of its maker, and least pleasurable. An ever-increasing craving for an ever-diminishing pleasure is the formula." Unquote. So the demon wants his nephew, as he calls it, to use the pleasures God has given to entice humans away from God. It seems like a pointless exercise, but you know what? It works all the time. And why should we even think about the three powers of the soul? Well, it's good for us to understand that love, anger, thought, hunger, and so on can be used for good or for evil. We choose which way we want to go. Well, our saint also spoke about the four principal virtues, but these take some time to discuss, and I think I'm going to wait until next week. I really hope you'll join us, and until then, see you in church.